So you guys asked for a Detroit Lions rebuild, and Jeff Okuda just got traded away to the Atlanta Falcons for a fifth round pick. The Lions recently acquired CJ Gardner-Johnson. I know it happened just a little bit while ago, and I'm really late to this, but I'm getting to it now. You guys also voted for the Lions rebuild, and they also got David Monty here with them as well. So David Monty, Jared Goff, Amon Ross St. Brown, they re-signed Marvin Jones. Welcome back to Detroit. They got Jamison Williams. They need some tight end help, but the offensive line is very good for the most part. And I would say this offense is pretty dangerous. And believe it or not, look at Jared Goff's stats. He was a top 10 QB this year. This season, Jared Goff was a top 10 QB. I don't care what anyone says. Oh, well, you're just wrong. He was just putting a good system and he had Amon Ross. No. No, Jared Goff was a top 10 QB. I don't think there's any denying it. But for the sake of the Madden rebuild, is he going to be our QB in the future? I don't know. QB regression does start at 30 years old, or it could be 31. So I don't know if this could, Jared Goofball could even get to an 85 overall. It just depends on his play. That's all I'm going to base it on. Defensively, you got Aiden Hutchinson. I still think it's an absolute delusion that people say, oh, Trayvon Walker was the better pick because he has the quote unquote higher ceiling. No, whenever you're the number one overall pick, you should be the best player in the draft, ready to go, ready to start right now because you are the number one pick, meaning you are the best player. There should be no higher ceiling. No, you should be at an unbelievable level ready to play. You should be the Miles Garrett. That's what you want in a pick for a defensive end. You want to be Miles Garrett. You're out the gate you're tearing up the nfl i don't want this higher ceiling bs anyways continuing on got kirby joseph and cj gardner johnson very young safeties but dbs they're probably gonna have to take devon witherspoon or christian gonzalez in the draft now that they traded away jeff okuda who remember was pick number three in the draft at one point he just has a huge injury problem lee mcneil looks a lot older than he is i'm pretty sure yeah he's 23 that's crazy but um Anyways, the team looks pretty good. I'm excited to do Lions Rebuild. I think the Lions are truly the people's team. Dallas Cowboys may be quote-unquote America's team, but I'm pretty sure the Lions are the people's teams. If, if the Lions won the Super Bowl next year, I'm pretty sure nobody would be upset by it. But in the NFC North, Roger Saffold retires on the Vikings. Okay, I don't know how he even got there. Did he go there in real life? I don't know. Anyways, continuing on, CJ Gardner-Johnson doesn't want to be here. I don't know the contract in real life, but I'm going to have to pay him in here because this rebuild is about him, so he can take whatever money he wants. Here he signs. I don't care if he didn't want to be here. Manuel Mosley, if he doesn't want to be here, I can't force him to stay, but I just want him here just for the sake of the rebuild, so I'll just overpay for this if I can and I can't. So for the sake of this rebuild, he just doesn't want to play here, and I necessarily can't do anything about that. So Sorry for the people that wanted to see Emmanuel Mosley for the first season because I wasn't going to re-sign him after that. He, he just doesn't want to play here. I can't force him to stay. Everyone else here, I just don't have an interest in. They can all walk. So apart from that, guys, I'm going to skip out on free agency as always and get to the draft. In the first round, I'm picking up defensive back Devon Witherspoon out of Illinois, six foot and 181. I thought it was a lot heavier than that, but he has 92 speed, great athleticism. His jumping, only 78 is kind of crazy, but he is a man-to-man -man type of guy, and I do think he will fit well in that man coverage scheme with the Lions defense. So this may seem like a crazy pick here using my other first round pick on Darnell Washington. I do think the Lions still need a tight end and to fill that problem, but I don't think all these tight ends will be off the board this quickly, but this was the next available one. Darnell Washington out of Georgia, hidden dev, 91 jumping, 85 speed, and six foot seven. Now, this is what the team looks like after the draft. I got this guy in the second round out of Alabama, 6'3", 307, rookie, 73 overall. He's going to be our future right guard. Washington is a 77 overall, so that was a great replacement, even though we took him in the first round. Witherspoon is a 77 overall. I'm going to start him over Cam Sutton because I think his use youth will overtake him. Tracy Walker, I just don't need on this team. He's already 28. He's going to regress. I'm going to save $4 million by cutting him, so I am just going to officially cut Tracy Walker off the team. Refresh the roster and I just adjust Devon Witherspoon back up. And yeah, the team looks pretty good. Charles Harris isn't going to last very long here. I still need more depth at defensive tackle, I would say. But other than that, I would also need depth at DB because Cam Sutton isn't going to last here very long, being 28 years old. Yeah, he probably won't even reach an 80 overall without morale. But a specialist. Um, do I have Josh Reynolds? No, I'll just keep St. Brown in the slot, even though he is receiver one as well. Malcolm Rodriguez is going to be the sub linebacker. Monty's going to start. Like everything that we got, Jared Goff is going to be the starter. We're going to see how he performs, but let's move in at the midseason mark. 
Here we are at the midseason mark as we are 6-1 and one top of the division. We have a breakout defensive back, Devon Witherspoon. Is he, yeah, Devon Witherspoon. He could be a superstar development if I actually remember to simulate to the next week, which will most likely not happen. But um, yeah, coming off of wins, the New Orleans Saints. Let's see what we got for the scouting national focus. I think I am going to go have to have to go defensive tackle here for the Lions because honestly, Aiden Hutchinson is the only good thing on that defensive line. Ali McNeil has potential with his youth, I guess. But players ready to negotiate. Let's see what we have here. So we have DeAndre Swift, who just doesn't want to be here. Current or projected depth chart too. He doesn't. He wants to be a starter. He's not going to be a starter. He can walk if he's going to be like that. Jonah Jackson. I'm going to overpay for this because he is young and he has star dev. He's one of our linemen. Josh Reynolds doesn't want to be here. He can walk. Romeo Aquara. I'm. I'm just not going to do this. You're going to be like a 75 overall because you're already 28 years old by the next season. I don't want that. Quintus Cephas. No. Charles Harris can walk. Yeah, everyone else here, I just don't have an interest. Maybe I would have signed, if DeAndre Swift had an interest in coming back, I would have signed him on a base deal, but he doesn't. So anyways, we're going to see in the next week if Devon Witherspoon can get up to Superstar Dev. Potentially he already has it, but I think he already has Star Dev. Coming off a loss to the Falcons, Jeff Okuda got his revenge. Breakout player, what do we got? Devon Witherspoon had a pretty quiet game out there. Yeah, that's usually how it goes, unfortunately. But anyways, guys, it's now time to move into the playoffs. Here we are in the playoffs, finishing 9-8. Wow, fall off on the season, but we still take the division as we're here to face the 8-9 Minnesota Vikings. Come all, coming off a loss to the Philadelphia Eagles. Jared Goofball was not good. <laughs> not good at all. 28th best offense, 16th best defense. Yeah, this is 30 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, 97 pass rating. Like, compared to the rest of the NFL, 24th, 21st, 26th, not good. Not even top 20 QB at that point. David Monty, 13 touchdowns, 4.4 per carry, 1,300 yards. That's a good season. Amon Ra, 1,200 yards, 11 touchdowns. Jameson Williams, not even 1,000 yards. Looking at it defensively, Alex Sands alone, 121 tackles, tackles for a loss, 13 for Romer Aquara, sacks, 11 for Aiden Hutchinson, 5 for Romer Aquara, interceptions, 3 for Ifetu. I don't, I'm not going to pronounce that. You guys see it. <laughs> Safeties, 1 for Aiden Hutchinson, and defensive touchdowns, 1 for the uh, guy I can't pronounce. Anyways, let's see if Jared Goofball can get a playoff win against the Minnesota Frauds. Let's see if he can move on to the divisional round. And he does. Here to face the 11-6 Carolina Panthers, who probably have Anthony Richardson or Bryce Young, I'm assuming, to move on to the conference championship. We do not. 42-24. to Let's move into the offseason. And the Cincinnati Bengals beat the Cowboys in the Super Bowl. Joe Burrow wins the Super Bowl MVP. Dak Prescott wins the league MVP. And there are no other awards here. We're going to see the development upgrades. I think we're going to have to move on from Jared Goff. And I'm going to trade up in the draft if I have to. Because Jared Goff had a terrible season. Offensively, Washington only has star dev. I don't think anyone else got an upgrade even. Defensively, Witherspoon only have star dev. There's no other upgrades really. Nobody the entire year got an upgrade. Well, that was a bust of a year. Let's go to the re-signings. In the NFC North, nobody retires. That's okay. But we're going to see what we got here for the re-signed players. I'm pretty sure I don't want anyone. Swift doesn't want to be here. Romeo Aquar still isn't good. Everyone else here can walk. Just don't have an interest. Maybe there's a QB in free agency. It depends who it is. I want to still try to keep this realistic. Let's hit it. After free agency, I got Trayvon Diggs, Derek Brown, who had interest in signing before, and then Montez Sweat, all improving our defense. Also, there was Joe Burrow in free agency, Justin Herbert, Tua, and I didn't sign any of these guys because Tua didn't want to play, so I wasn't going to overpay for him. I didn't sign Justin Herbert and Joe Burrow because I feel like it's so unrealistic for them to have free agency because I know for a fact the Bengals franchise would give Bank Joe Burrow whatever he wants. Like, no hesitation. Same thing with Justin Herbert to the Chargers. There's no reason why those guys would ever walk in real life. So I just feel like that'd be unrealistic if I signed those. Anyways, let's move to, into the draft. In the first round, I'm picking up Isaiah Hayden out of USC, 6 foot 2, 27 as a linebacker with 91 speed, 91 acceleration is crazy. He's definitely going to be the starter or maybe move him to left outside linebacker. Giving up a second round pick to acquire the star quarterback Trey Lance from the San Francisco 49ers. They're not using him anymore, so I'm giving it so I'm taking him, giving him a chance, and I think I am going to trade away Jared Goff as well. So apparently Aaron Rodgers has retired from the Jets, so I'm trading away a Jared Goff or a 2 and a 4 from the Jets. And the reason why I'm only getting a 2 and a 4 and not trading away a 1st, which I could have got a 1st for Jared Goff probably, but I don't think realistically he would go for that. I don't think anything any team would take him for that. So our new quarterback is 72 overall, Trey Lance, who has star development. Realistically, most quarterbacks from the draft that you do draft have star development and are around like 70 to a 75 overall. So... 
this is realistically our rookie quarterback that we could have drafted. I know some people might have clicked off the video and be like, oh, you, you, don't have a, you don't have the right QB, me, 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 me. I don't care. Jared Goff was doing shit, so I had to replace him. Marvin Jones, I don't think he's going to last much longer on this team. This dude, Trey Lance, has all the weapons he wants here. Am Amon Ross St. Brown, David Monty, Jamison Williams, Darnell Washington, and a good offensive line, which a lot of quarterbacks can't say they have. Hayden looks like a great player. He's going to be a starter here. Apparently, the CPU picked up this guy named Allen because I did not draft him. And Trayvon Diggs is the starter, of course. So we have more depth at DB. Still think he's not going to be here for too long. So I will need to draft maybe some more depth. A little bit better. Hayden is also going to be the sub starting linebacker. So apart from that, guys, it is now time to move in with our new quarterback. It's the midseason mark. Here we are at the midseason mark because we are 5-2, and two, second in the division with Trey Lance. Still a contested division. Also... Um, I was about to say I realized I traded Jared Goff to the Packers. I didn't. I traded him to the Jets. I mixed that up because Aaron Rodgers to the Jets, speculation, blah, 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 blah. You guys know what I'm talking about. Anyways, um, I think I'm still going to go linebacker here. So that way I can get a new left outside linebacker. And also Alex Anzalone is not going to cut it here for a long time. So players ready to negotiate. Let's see what we got here. We're also coming off a loss to the Vikings. I'm going to Ross St. Brown. Take whatever money you want. Five years. And he resigns. He actually wanted to be here. Panay Sewell. Give you a player friendly contract he resigns as well david monty doesn't want to be here take the money you want bro you're here a good running back he resigns taylor decker i'll do two years with you and no long-term commitment no deal okay i guess i'll increase that cam sutton I'll do like one year with you bro yeah this is cool i'm fine with that bring the length down how the hell am i supposed to bring the length down anymore from a year cameron sutton Whatever, Aleem McNeil, good good depth for sure. I like him. He's actually a number two, not considering at the moment. Okay, fucking retard. And um, everyone else here, ooh, Trey Lance, what you doing, bud? I gotta, um, I gotta negotiate with you at some point. I don't know why you don't want to be here. Anyways, it's now time to move in at two of the playoffs, and we finish the season nine and eight, missing the playoffs. What? Five and one to nine and eight, dude. This choke season is crazy. Stats and awards, Trey Lance, better than Jared Goff. <laughs> That's all I could say. 23rd best offense, first best defense. Do I really move on from him too? I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. David Monty, almost five per carry is crazy. I'm in Rossi and Brown, 1,200 yards, eight touchdowns. Nobody else is doing anything. Even Darnell Washington is just doing average. And uh, defensively, Isaiah Hayden, 117 tackles, tackles for loss, 28 for Montez Sweat. Holy shit. Sacks, 15 for Aiden Hutchinson, 10 for Derek Brown, interceptions, four, 4 for Kirby Joseph, safeties, 1 for Montez Sweat, defensive touchdowns is 0. Do I draft a rookie QB? I might have to. Anyways, let's move in to the offseason. And once again, the Broncos beat the Panthers in the Super Bowl. Russell Wilson wins the Super Bowl MVP, and Jacoby Brissett wins the league MVP. Dude, he is so overpowered in simulation. I have no idea why, but Isaiah Hayden wins Rookie of the Year, so he better have at least superstar developments. Looking into the offensive upgrades, I sure as hell know that Trey Lance didn't get anything. Offensively, we're the same. Defensively, Hayden is a superstar dev. Montez Sweat is a superstar dev. Aiden Hutchinson is an X-Factor. And Kirby Joseph is a superstar dev. All great things to see. Now let's go deal with Trey Lance and his contract. In the NFC North, Marvin Jones retires and Hitman also retires in the Vikings. I don't know who the other one was. I just didn't even bother to look. Players ready to negotiate. Let's see what we got here. Josh Rosen, Taylor Decker. He wants a long-term commitment. I'll give him three years. Yeah, sure. One more year makes a difference, huh? Cam Sutton. Um, he said bring the length down. I don't know what kind of crack he was smoking. I'm just going to do the same thing. Okay, didn't make a difference, I guess. Uh, Alex Anzalone can walk. Aleem McNeil just has no interest anymore. So if he has no interest, I'm not going to hold him against his will. Trey Lance. He doesn't like our scheme. He doesn't like how shitty and poverty this franchise is. And he, yeah, yeah, that's just the problem. We're just poverty and he doesn't like our scheme. So I'm going to offer him just this. And then he wants to hit free agency. I just traded for you. I'm not going to let that happen. I'm going to tag him and use him as trade piece in the draft if I can't get anything in free agency. But I'm targeting QB in free agency. Let's see what I can get. So after free agency, the QBs were really bad. So I just went with another receiver since Marvin Jones retired. Look at my QB options. I get Mac Jones, who doesn't want to be here. Then I get Jared Goff. Uh, that, then Daniel Jones and Kirk Cousins. Those are my options. I'm not, I'm not taking those. We'll just draft a QB. So let's get into the draft. 
So I am now trading away Trey Lance and pick 17 to move up six spots in the draft. And I know that may seem really stupid, but there's a QB on this board that I really, really want. And he looks very good. For some reason, he wasn't projected top five. Matt Allen out of Wyoming. He's the next Josh Allen. It had to be Josh Allen's name. Because look, same last name out of Wyoming. Basic ass first name. You, you gotta have it. He's gotta be his little brother. Elite strength, great throw power, amazing athlete. A's across the board. He's got to be my guy. What the heck, bro? Ugh, I mean, I guess Josh Allen started with normal dev whenever they drafted him. So 92 throw power, 79 speed. How do you have 79 speed but 90 acceleration? What is that? Anyways, he's going to be our new QB. In the second round, I'm picking up defensive tackle Tracy Bradley out of Old Miss. Power rusher, 6'2", almost 300 pounds and 89 strength. Now, this is the team after the draft. Matt Allen is a 74 overall, so he's basically the same thing we had as Trey Lance, but like, I would say better, in my opinion, just a little bit, but in terms of overall, he's the same. You have Jamison Williams, Chris Godwin, Amon Ross St. Brown, a 6'7 tight end, an amazing offensive line. There should be no issues here. You should have everything that your heart desires, all right? Why is Chris Godwin in the slot? It's going to be Jamison Williams, and then we're going to have Chris Godwin 1, Amon Ra 2. Defensively, my defensive tackle is a 73 overall. Let's move him up. Hayden's the starter. No more Alex ends alone. Samuels, I don't know who this guy is, but apparently he's going to be playing second string. Safety, strong safety. Actually, how fast is he and how tall is he? Okay, he's pretty big. He's 87 speed. His zone coverage sucks for a safety. And his man coverage is not good. So he's definitely not a DB, but <laughs> I mean, hey, he's big. I guess that's more of a linebacker there. But anyways, let's move in to the midseason mark. Here we are at the midseason mark as we are five and two top division. It really doesn't seem what to matter which quarterback we have because we always start five and two and then finish nine and eight. So scouting national focus. Do I even want anything in particular? Maybe just more depth at DB. I mean, linebackers, we didn't really get that much depth at linebacker because we did lose Alex Anza alone, but that's fine. Players ready to negotiate. Let's see what we have here. We are going to have Aiden Hutchinson. Take all the money you want, but at the same time, again, where is your fifth year option? <laughs> I, uh, I guess I just forget to give them their fifth-year options, but they should have fifth-year options, so do not complain in the comments. I'm giving them the fifth-year option. Same thing with Jamison Williams. He is also a fifth-year option candidate because he is a first-round pick. I'm pretty sure you can only have two first-round picks that get fifth-year options, so if you have, like, three first-rounders, you don't get another fifth-year option. I might be wrong on that. Kirby Joseph has superstar dev. He doesn't want to be here. He has no mentor. That's the problem, but whatever. I'm not going to sign you a mentor. Just pre-sign. Malcolm Rodriguez, I'm cool with you. Let's do a four-year deal. And he resigns. And then Cam Sutton, another one year would actually be solid with me considering I was, what? Not negotiating, move on. You're, you're interested in signing. What? <laughs> Cam Sutton's just genuinely retarded. I'm not going to touch him anymore. He's just, he's, he's retarded. He might be spreading it to our defense. Let's get into the playoffs. Here we are in the playoffs, finally, with a different outcome. 12-5, and five, top of the division here, coming off a win to the Minnesota Vikings. So a rookie quarterback is probably better, but let's see. And uh, pass rating is better. That's what I can say. 20th best offense, 4th best defense. Definitely a great rookie year, but he's kind of been doing the same thing all of our other quarterbacks have been doing, but with less interceptions and more accuracy. Day one starter, QB of the future is his player tag. So yeah. This, this is good. I like this, but unfortunately, we only have one more season after this. David Monty, 22 touchdowns, 4.4 per carry, almost 1,300 yards. Jameson Williams, 1,200 yards, 11 touchdowns. St. Brown, not even 1,000 yards and only two touchdowns, really. Looking at it defensively, Malcolm Rodriguez, 121 tackles, sacks for a loss, 15 for Montez Sweat, sacks, 19 and a half for Aiden Hutchinson, 12 for Montez Sweat, 9 for Derek Brown, interceptions, 3 for Cam Sutton, safeties, 0 defensive touchdowns is 0. So, Anyways, it's now time to see what we got against our division rivals, the 10-7 Green Bay Packers, see if our new rookie QB can get his first ever playoff win. He does not. 24-14, let's move into the final season. And the Falcons beat the Titans in the Super Bowl. Will Levis is the Super Bowl MVP for the Falcons. Okay. Jalen Hurts wins the league MVP. And Matt Allen wins the rookie of the year. So that's at least star development. Let's see what we got here for the upgrades. My quarterback should have at least star development now. And he does. Any other upgrades offensively? Really? I think Matt Allen is our only offensive upgrade the entire rebuild. Defensively, though, we're the exact same. Bradley has star dev. That's cool, though. <laughs> Damn it, dude. Quite unfortunate. Anyways, let's move into the re-signings. 
in the NFC North, nobody retires. That's fine. I might do a fifth season on this considering I actually want to see how Matt Allen goes. But let's see what we got here. Cam Sutton, he's 30, he's 75 overall now, and he is mentally brain dead. So I'm not re-signing him. And everyone else here, I'm just not interested in. So let's hit free agency. After free agency, we got Zion Johnson as our right guard, Rashawn Evans as depth at outside linebacker, Michael Carter as depth at halfback, and Avante Maddock as a defensive back number three. So let's move in into the final draft. In the first round, I'm picking up middle linebacker Joe Payne out of Mississippi State. 91 speed, 6'2", kind of like Isaiah Hayden that we currently have. Super fast linebackers, but uh, yeah, another great pickup. And in the second round, I'm picking up a defensive back Keontae Baptiste out of Western Michigan, 6'2", 194, 91 speed, 94 acceleration. Honestly, our linebacker looks more athletic than this guy, other than the acceleration and uh, the change of direction, but he still looks great. And in the third round, I'm picking up tight end Enrique McLeod out of LSU, 83 speed, 87 acceleration, 6'4", 275, hidden development, possession type archetype. Now, this is the team going into the fourth and final season. McAllen is kind of where Jared Goff started, but Jared Goff is already regressing now. McLeod is a 73 overall, 75 overall fullback. Payne is a 73 overall. Baptiste is a 75 overall. Very good team. Really, really happy with what we built. Just depends how simulation plays us, though. Pretty sure we haven't made it past the wild card yet. Well, yes, we actually have. We haven't made it past the divisional, but let's see if we can now. Let's get to the playoffs. Here we are in the playoffs going 10 and 7, second the division here to face the 11 and 6, top of the division, the Green Bay Packers. Stats and awards, Matt Allen, amazing season, wow. Passer rating is 21st in the NFL, so really only 8th for MVP, I thought it'd be top 5. 8th best offense in the NFL, it'd be cool to do a rebuild with him, a longer one. Second best defense, and 5,100 yards, 40 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. David Monty, 13 touchdowns, 4.6 per carry, 1,200 yards. Chris Godwin, 117 receptions. Holy shit, 1,600 yards, 14 touchdowns. Great season. Amon Ross St. Brown, 6 touchdowns, 1,000 yards. Jamison Williams hasn't done really jack shit in this rebuild other than, um, I mean, this still isn't a bad season. Very close to 1,000 yards, 8 touchdowns other than the previous season. He hasn't done really much of anything. Isaiah Hayden, 128 tackles, tackles for a loss, 17 for Monta Sweat. Sacks 21 and a half for Aiden Hutchinson, 10 for Monta Sweat. Quite a bit. Two interceptions for Isaiah Hayden, who is a player I really like. Safeties, one for Aiden Hutchinson, zero defensive touchdowns. Please let me beat the Packers here so that way we can move on to the divisional. I'll play the divisional because we haven't won one yet. So let's see if we could at least beat them. We do, 35 to 17. It's probably gonna end here. The Cowboys are overpowered in simulation, so let's face off. Here we are against the Dallas Cowboys. Three nothing start for them. Three to three now in Arlington, Texas. Ten to three, our first lead of the game in the second quarter. And okay, ten to ten at halftime. I don't understand how we let that slip. Very low scoring game. We have one of the best offenses in the league. We have top ten offense, but I'm sure they do too. And we have one of the top two defense. 24 24, and I think we sealed it with a field goal in the end there. I think we did. Pretty sure. And 27 to 24, we're going to be moving on to the conference championship. Here we are to face the 8 and 9 Seattle Seahawks in the conference championship. Don't know how they made it here, but let's just play. Here we are in Seattle as they apparently have the first round. What? No, not the first round, but they have the home field advantage at 8 and 9. So somehow they won their division. 21 to 10. It's really stupid how we have the better record, yet they get home field advantage. 28 to 25 now. Now, as they make a comeback, 28 to 28, don't choke this, 31 to 28, and did we just choke that we really, really, dude, come on. Okay, your Detroit Lions are not going to the Super Bowl, as this is a failed rebuild, back-to-back -back failed rebuilds for me, really need to step up my game. It's frustrating how we choked, and it's frustrating how, they, how the flawed the NFL system is, how an 8-9 team gets the home field advantage whenever I'm 10-7 and seven just because my division was significantly harder than the other team. But anyways, pretty sure the home field advantage has nothing to do with anything in Madden. But anyways, guys, apart from that, I thank you guys all for watching. I still did enjoy this rebuild, and I think I'm going to play this off camera as the Seahawks blow out the Steelers 42-10 to 10 in the Super Bowl. Oh my god. But anyways... Yeah, Matt Allen is definitely a fun QB to play with. I will be playing this probably off camera and see how far it takes. I'll probably win the Super Bowl in the very next season. But anyways, guys, apart from that, Monta Sweat gets the X Factor and Baptiste as star dev. But anyways, guys, apart from that, I thank you guys all once again for watching. And I'll see you guys all in the next one.